In this presentation, I will present what Barista Document Archiving is and how it is different from the simple inquiry presented with the existing document management system. The navigation method designed to help locate a document in an intuitive, quick, and easy manner. After finding a document, what can you do with it? Print it, fax, or email it, consolidate it into a large multi-page PDF for delivery to your customer, or as documentation for a taxing authority. What is a document? It can be a single page of an invoice. It could be a multi-page copy of a report. It can be a assembled packet with something like a cash receipts cover page, followed by attachments of the scanned checks being deposited. It could be a customer invoice with inspection paperwork, bill of lading, and even photographs of the shipment attached. Compared to other products, what is it intended to do and what is it not intended to do? It is meant to be an integral module within the add-on ERP platform and can be adapted to other Barista products. The storage structure. This is written in BBJ utilizing Barista. It does make use of many open source Java packages. It also uses some public domain binary programs that are configurable, in particular ImageMagick, GhostScript, and Tesseract. Its internal programs and call points are modifiable. Data is stored within the Barista table structure using vkeyed files and blobs. It is intended to allow for process automation. This will allow it to parse scanned input documents for things like creating an accounts payable invoice. The document archive design process is used to effectively categorize and file a document. It begins with a library definition which roughly corresponds to a filing cabinet. This is followed by multiple rule definitions whose principal task is to somehow identify a document based upon its contents and determine what filing cabinet it is to be placed into. A given document may go into multiple filing cabinets. Once a document type is detected, then it is further processed for data extraction into user-defined fields for such things as vendor customer number, invoice number, date, and amounts. These extracted fields are used to construct document titles, category definitions, and input fields for further add-on ERP processing. To help in this design phase is a WYSIWYG designer that can be used against a single file, but is also available in the processing queue stages to help design the detection and extraction methods. The OCR process itself can be rather slow and also has to check and correct the document rotation as well as process image filtering to remove smudges and background shading. The output was also selected to be a text searchable PDF file where the viewable image remains a cleaned up version of what was scanned with the textual components hidden inside for searching something that appears to the eye as daily amount to the OCR engine may have been translated to DAI followed by the number one and the letter Y. Likewise, the letter O and the number zero become interchangeable in the OCR process. The fuzzy logic within the Lucene text engine combats this. To this end, the design was to have a processing monitor that independently performs these various steps and then presents the final results to the user as a processing queue for acceptance or depending up other, upon other parameters to automatically upload to the final archive. Integration with the output of add-on relies upon the document printing system somehow getting a copy of its documents into the processing queue directory. Email attachments that are in the form of a PDF can be simply saved into this queue directory. Large photocopy or scanner devices that have the ability to create and store directly into a shared folder already. Commercial OCR products like Abbey Fine Reader and Xerox DocuCenter can likewise be configured to save to this queue directory. Each document is examined for word content. If word content is found, then the internal OCR process is bypassed. The document archive in this definition is similar in concept to a conventional filing cabinet. The documents are stored in their final output form as printed or displayed and are not saved as instructions on how to reprocess or reprint a report that was previously generated. This means that they are not subject to change as time goes on and report definitions change with an add-on. They are actual PDF documents that existed when printed and imported. Navigation must 
provide user-friendly access to finding a document and have search capabilities in line with walking up to a filing cabinet, opening the drawer that contains sales invoices, pulling the customer file folder jacket that contains copies of their invoices sorted by date. In the existing system, you may have two choices for, for retrieving and reprinting something that has already been processed and currently one mechanism for uploading and storing a scanned image. Using document inquiry, you can search for previously saved document but are somewhat limited in your abilities to quickly navigate to it. The documents are more or less randomly arranged and some may not have a source file, which indicates that it's an archive transaction only. Certain add-on options allow for the reprinting of older documents, such as the invoice history inquiry function within sales order processing. Knowing the customer number and the original invoice number, you can print a new copy of the invoice. Unfortunately, this is subject to the form definition in Jasper having evolved over time, and the output will represent the current layout version of the invoice. Externally scanned AP invoice documents can be attached during AP invoice entry and uploaded to a Google Doc storage area for future retrieval. This was illustrated in the productivity tips from add-on software that Paul recently presented.
In the new document archiving system, a tree view is displayed of collected documents. This allows for following a node into sales and selecting customer names, selecting a specific customer, a period of time, selecting an item for display, and finally displaying it. Additionally, with the magic of Lucene full text indexing, a node can be selected to limit the search to its contents and then typing in a Lucene type of query and very quickly getting results of all documents that match the search criteria. Documents may originate from within the ERP system as output from Docout or Jasper, or they can be directly imported as PDF files from page scanning or attachments from email or other, or other sources. A document is one or more related pages which share a unique document type or name and document ID. It can be stored as a single multiple PDF or a sequence of PDFs. Multiple copies of a given document will be stored together as indicated by a sequence number. For instance, reprinting of a given invoice multiple times will result in a copy of that invoice being stored in the archive multiple times identified as multiple iterations. This is useful when trying to track down ingenious employees that alter an invoice to allow for diverting partial payments. Alternatively, a document could be a packet of related material, like originates from a purchase order, the receiver at the dock, and possible pictures of the cargo if converted to a PDF, inspection reports, and way bills. It could equally be a sales invoice accompanied by a shipping bill of lading, NAFTA compliance form, or pictures of the cargo. A given document can all be, also be stored and processed in many ways from its single scan. Not only can it be treated as a packet, but the contents of the packet may also be treated as individual pages for processing into different document libraries and stored in a different sequence. The principal tool is a document archive view. The pres this presents the user-defined categories in a tree navigation pattern with principal nodes such as accounts payable, miscellaneous reports, and sales. Expanding a node such as accounts payable will then display all AP invoices that were received from vendors in a traditional searchable grid format. Primary columns being the document type designation, the vendor name or type of item, document ID, which is a unique identifier, that is either a serialized number or based upon something like the actual invoice number, the subtype, again a user-defined designation, a sequence if multiple copies of the same form exist, a derived title, the document date, and a timestamp of when the entry was created. All of these columns are searchable and the order can be set by clicking at the top of the column. In addition, the search field is not only able to search content on these in columns, but inquiries against the Lucene full text index of all words contained within the underlying documents. The construct of the search field is in the Lucene Query Builder manner and is not just a word search like in a normal query. For example, to find invoices containing tiny term in the display, the search would need to be specified as star tiny term star or tiny term in quotes followed by the tilde because of the Lucene functionality. <laughs> You can also apply a more straightforward filter such as designating all accounts payable documents that have a document date on or after July 12th of 2017. The defined filter can all be also be saved. Once a document of interest is located, double clicking on it brings up the internal PDF viewer showing the document. Each document is actually stored in four forms. The final cleaned up text searchable, searchable PDF, which is a primary view, the original output from a document scanner or an email attachment that may contain gray areas or original document highlighting and effects, a raw text component which contains just all the words, and a text component that has the underlying text content broken down by words and positions within the document. The other just as useful navigation method is to instead expand the node customers under the sales node. 
If you know the customer's name, then you can expand down into just those invoices that pertain to the customer, then into the subset of just a given year. The search field is then applied only to the subset of this new selection. Likewise, navigating down into the customer name node, we are again segregated by year than month. This navigation and drill down is user definable with up to 24 level layers of categories. There is not a limit on the number of categories that a document can be placed into. Any given document may also be stored into multiple libraries and document types. Additional retrieval methods. The ability to directly link any document to an existing item within the ERP application. Example, from within accounts payable inquiry and maintenance vendors, select a vendor. Choose invoice history inquiry from the options menu. Pick an invoice to display. Click on the image. This mechanism can supplement or replace the current add-on payment process flow of storing scanned documents up on Google for use in the remote payment authorization application as presently exists in the accounts payable system for those customers that possibly do not wish to store their company information up on Google. What can you do with a document? Having selected a document for viewing, it has the option of being saved to a file as a standalone PDF or a PNG image. Printed, emailed, faxed via the document processing queue within Barista. Within the viewer, you can scale, page navigate, and rotate the viewed image. While navigating within the viewer, you may mark a given document across libraries for further action. This to include the ability to aggregate the selected documents into a large multi-page PDF that can then be furnished to a customer via the email fax mechanism or saved as a PDF file. What is different from competing products? This is not designed to enhance the output of an existing report or print job. Rather, it assumes that your document is coming from within a DocOut formatted output or a Jasper reports formatted output. It will only take a PDF document as input. The PDF input can be a text searchable form as typically supplied by invoices arriving via email from suppliers or as the output of some higher level bulk scanners that already have built in OCR capability or when necessary an internal OCR engine is applied against the document for rendering. This is not designed to store non-PDF documents. Some of the other products allow you to directly store Excel, Word, or any other form of binary information into the archive. There is not an external scripting language to allow for reassembling of documents into a tiled fashion. That would produce things like a customer statement with the customer's respective invoices attached in a tiled for to a page type of fashion. However, the application is entirely written in Barista and BBJ, so you are free to roll your own. Security for internal users is managed via the Barista Application Security Administration. 
What is similar to competing products? The application and its output are accessible via the Thin Client, the JNLP Client, and the BUI interfaces of BBJ. It does not require the presence of a native PDF viewer on the client. They are not rendered via a browser mechanism. Documents can be retrieved, emailed, printed, stored, and combined for further handling. Your customers can be given limited access to documents that you mark as being available to them, such as allowing a customer to retrieve their own invoices. The documents are stored within a library, which consists of two vkeyed files. The archive file, as it referred to, consists of the unique key identifier of a specific document, along with its raw text content, a bounding box text content, the original PDF image, and the final enhanced PDF image stored as blob objects within this file. Essentially, this limits an individual document PDF to approximately 500 megabytes, since the potential record length maximum is just under 2 gigabytes per record in a vkeyed file. The category file is a much shorter collection of keys that represent the organizations of the categories as defined, pointing back to the unique document type, name, and ID combination. In utilizing the vkeyed file structure, we are able to make use of the variable length nature of each record to save space, its dynamic key allocation capabilities, as well as unlimited support for numbers of keys and their composition, and the AES encryption capabilities, although at this point I am not making use of this encryption feature. The raw text content field additionally makes up the component of the full text Lucene index that is maintained on each library. Note that this Lucene index is processed outside of the internal BBJ file definitions via the use of triggers and custom Java classes. BBJ does not yet allow the inclusion of blobs into a full text index of Barista. <laughs> Process automation. Provision has been made to establish a relationship between content fields of a scanned and processed document as input into a specific barista table alias and data column with a formula that can be applied to allow for automatic accounts payable invoice processing to automate the creation of accounts payable invoices. How it works. Library definition. This assigns a name and description to a library, associ associates it with an external group if wanted, associates an alias in the barista table definition corresponding to the archive and category file, allows the library to be soft locked for maintenance, sets up default library permissions, allows for the assignment of barista security roles, external roles, and the necessary triggers to maintain the Lucene full text index. If defining a new table alias, a template alias docarc00 can be copied to create the document storage file. A template alias doccat00 can be copied to create the document category file. This is done utilizing the record save as while in Barista table maintenance. The create option will also create these table aliases using the template files if not present when create is chosen. After this step, the new alias becomes just another alias file within the Barista development system. Rule definition. This is where processing steps are defined along with the methods to create the distinct document type, name, and ID combinations. This begins with a detection rule, essentially how to tell if the document being processed belongs to this definition. The extraction rule, how to retrieve data from the document and convert it to a variable field that can be understood by BBJ. The category filing, how to construct the tiered structure of the user-defined categories from those variables and other constants. The add-on fields, how to relate an extracted variable or field content to a field on an add-on add input form. The rule designer 
is a WYSIWYG tool that allows examination of a PDF to assist in the design of the detection and extraction components of a rule. The tool is available to examine a standalone file and is also available from within the processing queue to edit rules against documents that have been processed. So initially we are selecting a scanned PDF invoice. Clicking on the text content tool, you will see that there is no text component. This document contains some shading that will make it difficult for the OCR process to extract information. We then select the image filter tool to clean up the document. Note in the automatic processing, six iterations of filtering and OCR conversion takes place and a vote is taken upon the maximum number of recognized words. The highest score wins, and that is what is stored. <clears throat> the OCR process is also capable of auto-rotation processing. We then click on the OCR process button. Clicking again on the text content tool, you will now see that we have extracted text. We can click on the highlight tool, which will mark each word recognized. The color and intensity of the highlight tool is user configurable. Clicking on a marked word will display the textual contents and its X by Y coordinate within the document based upon the PDF coordinate system. We can also choose the cropping tool, which will outline a selected area, again in the user definable bounding box, stretching and shrinking until we get the area wanted. The then selecting the detection tool, we can define the detection formula wanted. In this case, I'm selecting a predefined detection for the form in question. You will note that the detection formula itself can be a combination of Lucene and regex terms. We then set a minimum scoring threshold that the Lucene must meet to be considered part of this rule. Likewise, we can be using barcodes or even the file name for the detection methods. The extraction definition works in a similar fashion, but instead of looking for a score, we are trying to identify content. The content can also be barcode in nature. The extraction method also provides for a relative location. That is, find the word invoice in a certain area, retrieve what is two lines down and three columns to the right. If it is a date in the form of 02-January-17, translate that to the Barista standard of 2017-0102. Processing Monitor Similar to the document processing queue within Barista, its purpose is to examine the contents of a directory for new PDF files placed within. It then will begin the auto-processing of that document for inclusion into the archive, running the OCR components as necessary and splitting the document into multiple pages, auto-rotating each page to a vertical orientation, then detecting and extracting the fields as defined. There is not a direct tie-in between the Docout and Jasper output of your existing Barista add-on programs. Rather, you define the Barista STBLs for the Auto Archive, yes, and the Doctor Archive pointing to the location of the processing queue directory. You can also define the Doctor Archive to a conventional location and have your own separate program occasionally make copies from it into this queue processing directory. The documents will be erased from the queue directory as they are processed. Processing parameters. This is where the external programs are defined along with whatever parameters need to be passed to them, as well as cosmetic settings for the bounding boxes, which are also settable within their individual screens. Processing options. The choices here determine how far along the auto-processing process takes place. Is it to auto-match items of like pro item IDs and types, automatically combine them, automatically upload them, and just retain exceptions? The processing queue. This is the final step in editing, combining, ordering, and accepting items for upload into the archive depending on how many automatic steps you have answered in the earlier parameters. They can be done totally manually or only exceptions will show here. Program modifications. The Docout system already has the necessary code to do the auto archive, but most of the Jasper outputs, outputs from within add-on do not. Essentially, any add-on program that executes the fill method for BB Jasper report needs the following type of section added immediately after the fill and before other processing takes place. It determines whether the auto archive STBL is set. 
If so, it sets a directory to the doc directory archive, and then it completes by doing a report export to PDF with the necessary parameters to save that filled report also to the queue directory.